Today's video brought to you by Easy Break Clips. Hi, I'm Cletus with Easy Break Clips. We have exclusive contracts with all the automotive manufacturers to manufacture all their clips. We use special plastic that's guaranteed to break the first time you try to use it. Our engineers have determined that no vehicle ever gets above 75 degrees, so our plastic is engineered to dissolve at 80 degrees and snap apart. It's great stuff. You should get it for your car. Remember, Easy Break brand. Remember, when you want OEM quality, ask for them by name. Easy Break brand. Most of us with a retired police car have one or more spots like this on the car somewhere. Unless you've got a street appearance version, you know, undercover, unmarked type unit, then you might have gotten lucky and not had a bunch of holes drilled in it. I will post a link. I did a video of what I think is the best way to plug your holes when you've had a light bar, sirens, other things like that. But for something like this, the method that I show in that video isn't really practical because here you've got a small area and it's curved and difficult to, to maneuver in and, and get everything done right. Now, obviously you can take it to a professional, pay a body shop and they'll fix it for you and maybe that's the way you go. But this is a DIY channel so we're going to try something different. Right now it's got silicon rtv in it and you know it seals it keeps it from leaking but it looks really crappy so <laughs> we'll see if we can fix that up so i found this product called new metal it's an epoxy putty basically two-part epoxy system you mix them together it makes like a clay and then you can fill the hole and it'll harden it comes in at least two colors there's white and black obviously i got white for this car but they do sell it in black if your car is painted black where you're filling the hole. Read over the directions are pretty simple. It says use as little as possible at a time, so obviously to maximize your working time because since it is an epoxy, once you start mixing it together, it's gonna to start reacting and hardening. The keys seem to be to do this in temperatures over 70 degrees, mix very thoroughly for at least two minutes, and then fill the surface that you're filling as quickly as you can and get it shaped and then it's going to start hardening uh, and temperatures above 90 it says it's a lot more flexible uh, but it hardens quicker and so obviously here it's probably a hundred so it's should harden quickly um, as far as surface prep clean it up use some lacquer thinner or something similar to get any greases off i would go ahead and probably do a little light prep sand maybe a 400 grit or something just to give it a little something to tack onto. now if you're sanding something like this just be careful there's sharp edges most likely since it was drilled with a drill bit they're not going to clean it up they just drill it put the spotlight in and they go so there's going to be sharp edges in here if you're poking around with sandpaper you may cut yourself so just be real careful uh, as far as removing the silicone usually just kind of got to press it out and maybe scrape it off with a scraping tool inside the box you just have your A and B components and so just cut off as little as you can get away with using at a time and uh, they say measure them 50-50 so that they are exact and then make sure you mix them very thoroughly so there's no no miss spots in the mixing you want a consistent color to remove the a pillar trim on most of your police vehicles they just pop off there's usually not any bolts or screws holding them uh, on the charger it helps to peel back that piece so you can get a hold of it See there's a retainer up top and then both the Crown Vic and the charger, the bottom just kind of fits into, so kind of like that and then you have retainer 
clips and pins. I like said the Crown Vic's almost exactly the same. The first thing I'm going to do is just take a big screwdriver and try to push the silicone. You'll see when I do that, this kind of pops up a little bit. See how big the glob it takes to seal this. But you're going to need to get as much of this out as possible and then watch out for like the sharp metal. You can use whatever to get it out of there. I used a plastic scraper, which is very unlikely to scrape up your paint compared to scraping it with a screwdriver or a metal scraper. You can also use a needle nose to grab and remove some of it from the inside. The other thing you're going to want to do, anytime you do a body repair with a drill, the edges are usually pulled up just a little bit. Usually you can't see it to your naked eye, but if you go fill this, prime it, sand it, and paint it, the ring will always be raised and it will always be either no paint or too thin a paint. So what you want to do is tap down those edges. Different ways you can do it. There's a little obvious high spot like right there high spot try to more aggressively tap it down because I said anything that's high is going to show later. Now if you just put an epoxy on here and you don't care what it looks like then you can skip this step but so if you might ever paint this finger you can't feel any raised spots. Perfectly fine to have indentations, you just don't want raised spots. Any indentations are going to fill up with the filler and it's going to look great. Any raised spots are going to show. You want to sand the edges just a little bit so that there's some texture for the product to grab onto. Grab the first thing in the drawer is 320. I would probably recommend doing a four or six. But there's not a whole lot of difference for as little as I'm doing this. So the nice thing about lacquer thinner is it'll usually clean up just about anything, dries really quick, and it almost never will damage your paint. But the only exception to that if somebody used a rattle can and just sprayed it, it will take off rattle can. This is what it looks like when you open the package. I will caution you, they are difficult to get out if you're trying to save this package. If you don't care about the package, it'll just pop right out. But this side sticks to the inside, so like for me, I put one finger in one color and one in the other just to make sure I didn't accidentally activate this stuff. I have a bit of a concern since this one is brown and gray, and it looks like you've got way too much brown over here and then the gray on this end. So I'm going to cut from here and see if it mixes better. This piece is all white. about a half inch on each one and hope that that's the right amount change out my blade and then throw it away this time you need them you can't use it
and take these two and it says to mix and mix and mix until you have a consistent color. They suggest that might take two minutes. So I'm going to keep mixing and try to have the camera ready to watch me put this on the car. Got a pretty uniform color. It's obviously not a perfect match for white here, but it has to be. product that you can sand and pond and paint and all that. So it says that you can work it for about 30 minutes, give or take, I guess depending on the temperature and so forth. And then it says it starts to cure in about an hour. My luck is never that good with epoxies. Usually they start to set up real quick. I'm sure it's the Texas heat. It says full cure in 12 hours, so I'm just going to leave this overnight and not even mess with it. I figure the more I mess with it, I'm just going to make it look worse. What I'll do once it fully sets, I'll sand it smooth and try to get it as flush as I can with here. Ultimately, I'm probably going to put some sort of light here uh, rather than leaving these screws or trying to remove the screws and plug them. Uh, it's not that I necessarily need a spotlight or even need a functioning light. I just, once you have stuff like this, I think it looks better to have something in its place rather than a patch like that but that's just me because I'm, I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing the body work on this panel here and trying to make it look you know as if it had never been drilled so we'll come back tomorrow we'll see how this is doing and see you know, how much sanding it's going to take and everything it's got a little bit of tackiness to it right now it feels honestly like i put some chewing gum in here All right, it's been well over 12 hours. You see I've taped all around the repair area. I'm gonna sand it and see if we can kind of smooth it out, level it out so that it's not so obvious. I don't wanna sand the paint around it, which is why the tape is there. The, uh, the repair is very hard now. It feels a lot like a Bondo type repair. It doesn't feel like metal. And it seems to sand. I'm going to see what I can do with the sanding to uh, get it to where it looks flush and smooth. Right now it looks like a piece of chewing gum got stuck in the hole. <laughs> and uh, it feels like there's a little bit of a dip in the middle and then obviously the outer edges are raised so the outer edges need more sanding you get the general idea i'm not going to stand here and film me sanding this for 30 minutes that would bore you to death so i just used a 320 grit to sand this down like i said i'm not trying to get it body shop perfect I just basically wanted it so that it wasn't so obvious from about this far away that there was a big glob of black RTV there. If I continue to sand I can get this smooth but I'm also going to start taking paint off and then I'd have to paint here. So I may leave it like this or I may sand on it some more. But the reason I did the wet sanding was to see if it's watertight so let's see and there does not appear to be any water inside the car also putting my finger in there and trying not to cut myself 
there's no water behind there. Just have to take my word for it. <laughs> so in the end, I would say this is a good product. Like I said, it, how OCD you are will determine how much you want to sand on this and get it perfect or even paint a little bit on it afterward. But just to have something that's a solid fix that's not going to leak and not something that somebody could poke a screwdriver through and get in real easily, this seems to be the the ticket.